During the Second World War in 1943, major countries formed two alliances of powers to fight against their enemy. The alliances were the Axis powers formed by Germany along with Italy and Japan, and the Allied powers formed by the UK, the US, and the Soviet Union. At that time, Germany had the strongest power compared to other countries and even managed to rule most of Europe. In order to defeat the Axis powers, the UK devised a secret operation called Operation Husky that started from the island of Sicily in Italy. The plan was to defeat Italy to weaken Axis powers and later launched an attack on Germany. Before they started Operation Husky, they had to drive away Axis troops from Sicily first. At night in the city of London, England, a man named Ewan was having a party. He was an intelligence service of the British Navy. After the party, his wife approached him and told him that her status as a Jewish forced her to evacuate to America in case Germany launched an attack on England. Turned out, the relationship between her and Ewan was not in a good state. Ewan himself, as a part of the British Navy, had to prioritize the country above his wife and children. Shortly after, Hester, Ewan's secretary, came to say goodbye to Ewan's wife. On the other hand, a British intelligence agent named Charles was going to a cinema. Different from Ewan, who was part of the Naval Division, Charles came from the Air Force Division. At the cinema, Charles met his colleague named Jean, a girl he had a crush on for a long time, but unfortunately, his feelings for her were one-sided. Jean never responded to him. When they were chatting, suddenly, Jean's friend from America came to greet them. Looking at how close she was with her friend made Charles quiet. The next day at Charles's home, his mother asked for the info about Charles's late brother who died on the battlefield. Charles's brother was one of the British fighter plane pilots that died a week ago on the battlefield, but since he died in the conflict area, the military had trouble retrieving his body. Charles assured his mother that he would find a way to retrieve his brother's body and bring him home. Somewhere else in an office yard, the British Prime Minister was seen talking with the leader of the intelligence service named John Godfrey about their plan to drive away German troops from Sicily. The Prime Minister reminded him that they only had six months remaining before Operation Husky started. Confidently, Godfrey convinced the Prime Minister not to worry because he had plans to expel the troops from there. In the afternoon, went to the state intelligence headquarters. Charles was there to represent the Air Force Division while Ewan represented the Navy. Godfrey told them that he had made a plan to divert the attention of German troops from Sicily by spreading fake news about the British attack on Greece. The fake news would surely provoke Germany and surely would order all their troops in Sicily to respond British in Greece. They would catch the Germans off guard and would help Operation Husky to run smoothly. Charles agreed to the plan but was not sure how to spread the news to the leader of the Axis powers, Hitler. Charles suggested they trap the Germans by sending a washed-up corpse with the fake news embedded in it to the enemy's territory to avoid suspicion from them. That way, the enemy would suspect the corpse was the corpse of the British messenger who died on his way. Hearing the plan, Ewan agreed to it. Godfrey then assigned Ewan and Charles to lead the operation. After the meeting, Charles, Ewan, and one other member of the operation went to a remote empty house which they later used as the headquarter for the operation. On their way to the headquarter, they discussed the name of the operation and after a long discussion, they came up with the name Operation Mincemeat. They started the operation right away the next day. Ewan and Charles first searched for the most suitable corpse for their operation from the morgue. They needed a corpse who died from drowning. Hester herself helped by tidying the rooms and recruiting new members for the operation. After days of searching, they still couldn't find a suitable body so Hester offered help to ask her friend who is a forensic officer, and with his help, they managed to find a male drowned body for the operation. That night at a bar, Ewan, Hester, and Charles were discussing the corpse they found that day. Ewan explained that German soldiers were very careful when examining something and a corpse without identity would immediately be considered a red flag. They had to make a false identity to trick the Germans, and after a long discussion, they decided to give it the identity of William, a British naval soldier who had a beautiful fiancée named Pam. The only thing they needed to do was to look for Pam's figure in real life. Suddenly, Charles remembered Jean. The next day, Charles met Jean and told him about the operation. Charles asked her to play the role of Pam in real life. Jean took a moment of silence, but in the end, she decided to help with the operation for the sake of her beloved country. Sometime later, they tried to take the corpse's photo to make it look alive, but to no avail. All their photos were not convincing enough. That night, Jean secretly looked at the photos that Yuan took that day, and after looking at them, she suddenly found some similarities between the corpse and one of her friends. 
The next evening, Jean invited Yuan, Hester, and Charles to meet her friend at the bar. When her friend came, everyone was shocked to see the figure in front of them who looked exactly like William. To make sure the operation went smoothly, Yuan pretended an interview with Jean's friend for Naval Radio. After the interview and taking some pictures, Yuan took Jean back to her house. On their way, they planned the perfect life story of Pam while acting like they were the real William and Pam. Two months passed and the preparation for Operation Mincemeat was almost finished. At work, Charles listened to female employees gossiping about Yuan and Jean's closeness. At first, he didn't seem to care about it but when he witnessed it for himself, he felt jealousy in his mind. The next day, Yuan introduced two people from the British Embassy who would later serve in Spain. In the meeting room, Yuan explained to all military leaders the reason for inviting the two of them was because William's corpse would later be washed ashore in Spain and their role is important in the operation. The next day, the preparations were continued, starting from making a love letter written by Pam which William's corpse would carry, making the fake documents containing the British attack on Greece, and preparing other things. A few weeks later, the preparations finally finished. The only thing they had to do was to wait for the execution to take place in three days. At the office Charles, Yuan, Hester, and Jan were having a small celebration party. They hoped for the success of the mission. If they managed to accomplish the mission, they would make a new history. After the party, Yuan took Jean home. When they arrived at Jean's house, Yuan took an eyelash from Jean's cheek. That gentle and caring attitude made things awkward. Jean quickly said goodbye and went inside. The next night, Godfrey called Charles. Apparently, he suspected Yuan's brother was the Soviet Union's spy who helped Germany and wanted Charles to investigate it in exchange, he would return Charles's brother's corpse from the battlefield. Charles was given that special mission and he initially refused it. He said that he would never betray his friend, but considering what he could get in return, he decided to accept it. The next day, while getting ready, Charles saw the officer slip Jean's eyelashes that Yuan took yesterday into the fake document. Charles stayed silent but was confused why Yuan had Jean's eyelashes on him. He knew that he was on duty so he didn't say anything about it. After starting the operation, Charles, Yuan, Jean, and the driver that was assigned for the operation went to the bar to devise what the driver should do for the operation. When Yuan was talking to the driver, Charles invited Jean to dance. That was when Jean told him how stunned she was by William and Pam's love story. She even said that even if it was just a made-up story, she still dreamed of such a thing happening to her. After hearing that, Charles realized that Jean must have fallen in love with Yuan. Charles then advised her not to get too into the role because after all, all of this was just a mission and wouldn't stay like that forever, and they had their own life outside the mission, especially Yuan. He had a wife and children in real life and thus their made-up relationship would never work. Upon hearing that, Jean didn't say anything and immediately left. Yuan saw her and ran after her. When he finally caught up with her, Jean confessed how she had fallen in love with William's figure inside Yuan and ended up forgetting the reality and didn't realize that Yuan had a family in real life. She told Yuan not to worry about her and that she would remain professional towards the operation. After saying that, she left. Yuan wanted to catch her but he still had a mission to deliver William's dead body for the operation. After delivering William's corpse, Yuan immediately went to Jean's house and kept apologizing to her. He knew that deep down, he also started falling in love with Jean. He felt comfortable near her, but he knew that he had a family waiting for him to return home. Even though his relationship with his wife was a bit complex, he still wanted to make things right between him and his wife. He didn't want to betray the woman that he loved. He said that he would try to bury all his feelings for Jean and remain professional for the sake of the completion of the operation. He hoped for Jean to do the same thing. Jean didn't say anything to respond, but after Yuan left, tears began falling down her cheeks. Two days passed. In the office, Yuan kept thinking about his problem with Jean but tried to remain focused on his job. Shortly after, Jean came to his office and said that she would also do the same thing. She hoped the problem between them would not taint their professionalism. Jean then invited Yuan to pray together for the success of the mission and that day, April 17, 1943 at 3.15 in the morning William's body was finally washed away into the ocean. Thirteen days later on April 30, 1943, six Spaniards found William's body on the shore, and according to the plan, the documents were confiscated by the Spanish police. Ewan called the embassy to report the confidential document that was confiscated and asked the embassy to take the document as soon as possible before being examined by the Spanish police. 
He deliberately said that because he knew the phone of the British Embassy had been tapped by the Germans, and to be more reassuring, Yuan kept calling as if he was panicking. He also wrote a telegram to the Spanish government and pretended to be a royal official in order to get the secret documents, but again, the Germans, who also intercepted the telegrams of the Spanish government, read the telegrams. They fell for the trap. Two weeks passed. On the street, when a British embassy representative met a German embassy representative. The German embassy looked at him with a smile, marking their success on Operation Mincemeat. The next step was for the British Embassy to secretly bribe the Spanish police to return the documents immediately without having to be checked. After the Spanish Police Department approved the request, the Embassy sent an email regarding the approval and the only thing to do was to wait until the document was sent back. Days passed and there was no news about the documents. Everyone started to get nervous. Soon, there was a telegram from the Embassy announcing that the documents had been returned and would be sent to England immediately. After the documents arrived at night, Yuan, Charles, and other members examined William's belongings one by one. They were disappointed because nothing had changed, even the royal seal's stamp on the letter envelope was still in good condition, but when the letter was opened it turned out that Jean's eyelash was missing. When examined using chemicals, it was clear that the document had been opened, even reprinted. The three of them smiled happily because they managed to bring success to the operation. On the other side, Jean who just came back home suddenly surprised by the existence of the bartender at the bar she and the others used to visit in her house. He then showed a photo of Jean that they used for the Operation Mincemeat. The bartender confessed that he was actually an anti-German rebel group who wanted to overthrow Hitler. Despite being on the same side, the rebel group had a completely different method to do their mission, namely using violence. The bartender then threatened to shoot Jean if she refused to explain the whole operation to him. Meanwhile, at the naval base, Hester told Yuan and Charles that she just got a telegram from the state intelligence service informing her that Hitler had ordered almost all of his troops in Sicily to Greece. Even though their plan was a success, it felt like there was something wrong. Suddenly, Jean called. In a panic, Jean asked them to go to her house immediately. After hearing the story from Jean, Yuan and Charles argued. Charles felt that this was all Yuan's fault because he was the one who always invited them to drink at that bar. In the middle of the debate, Yuan told Jean to stay at her house for a while until they know the identity of the bartender. Outside, Charles expressed his feelings. He said that he had liked Jean all this time but chose to keep it to himself for the sake of the mission, while Yuan, who clearly had a family was busy approaching Jean and missed the fact that Yuan's brother was the Soviet Union spy. Charles suspected that the bartender must be Yuan's brother's accomplice. Operation Mincemeat might have been leaked to the Germans. Yuan tried to calm him down by saying that if what the bartender said was true, then there was nothing to worry about. The next day, they reported last night's incident to Godfrey. Upon hearing that, Godfrey was furious. The situation had reversed and there would be a possibility that Hitler trapped them by announcing that he had ordered his troops to go to Greece. There might be a lot of German soldiers waiting for them in Sicily. Yuan tried to convince them that there was still a possibility that their operation would be successful. The only thing they could do was nothing but to pray to God. That night, when Yuan came home, he saw Jean tidying up her things. Jean said that she got an offer to move to another division. She said that it was the best option for her. Moreover, she would be safe there. Yuan couldn't say anything in response. Even though he was sad, he still hoped for her safety. He still encouraged and hugged her while saying goodbye. Two months later, on the night of July 10, 1943 at the headquarters, Everyone could only pray for the Allied troops who were starting to move to the island. Telegram informing them that the Allied forces had succeeded in conquering the island of Sicily, meaning that Operation Mincemeat was a success. Everyone in the room cheered. That morning after a long night, Charles and Ewan sat together. At that moment, Charles apologized to Ewan. He said that Godfrey had ordered him to spy on Ewan's brother in exchange to retrieve his brother's dead body from the battlefield. Hearing the confession just now, Ewan was not angry, he instead asked Charles's permission to come to his brother's funeral. Not only that, but Yuan also said that his relationship with his wife slowly started to improve. The time he spent with Jean made him realize that a man might be attracted to many beautiful women out there, 
But in the end, a man's heart is only one and will always return to his beloved wife. Now that their mission had ended, even though they had gone through tough situations, both of them and the rest of the team had managed to make history. They managed to deceive the cruel dictator, Hitler. It was only a matter of time, sooner or later, the Allied Alliance would definitely win the war, 